Okay, everybody, today we're going to do the Elf variant for my movement Enya deck. The Elf variant is more fun to play, but not as powerful as the Bamboozle deck. I had a lot of trouble trying to get it to work just right. But it was also a learning experience for me because I had to use cards that I don't usually use in this particular combination. And I had to think slightly differently about my games and it actually ended up being really exciting and fun. The first things first is the fact that we have our core cards and we have Marching Orders back. Marching Orders is really strong with the Elven Mercenary. The main goal of these cards is to thin your deck and get a lot of easy value. The second step we're going to add into the deck is the movement cards. These are a lot of tempo and they can also be used to disrupt your opponent's strategy if they wanted to let's say use a cow carcass on you or if you want to move all their cards into a single row so you can lacerate them twice which we'll see later then we're going to add in the elves the elves bring us a little bit more control uh, onto the board allow us to remove certain things like eggs and stuff the eggs combo well with the hawker smuggler who will get points every time you pop an egg because, you know, another unit's been spawned onto the board. Illyrian gives us more tempo to combo off of our uh, movement set. Uh, Milva allows us to counter some buffs that our opponent might play and allows us to push the uh, Dothblana Archer back into our hand to get value from it again. The hard thing about the Archer is that it's, you know, since it's only 5 strength, it's hard to bounce it back to your hand unless you are really playing correctly there. The next thing we're going to add is the hand popping set. We only have four cards here. These four cards allow you to kind of carry into the final round. It's a little bit of a burst. I'm not sure how much I like it since it doesn't pair well with Milva, but I decided just to have more elves on, in the deck and this will help me pull Illyrian more often because I want to pull Illyrian earlier rather than later. Final stuff is our kind of techie cards. We have Shiru, which I really like. Uh, the double Scorch can be really powerful. Our cards are a little less strength in this version, since the uh, elf part is like five strength and stuff like that. You can get a Scorch off, and you, if you don't really like, let's say, the Dimerim Shackles, which we're adding here, you can convert that into a Scorch. We have three bronze spells in this, uh, and the reason for that is sometimes you need the Dimerium Shackles against certain combos. I'm actually thinking that that's probably the bronze card I would kick out since it really is like very few matchups in which the Dimerium Shackles actually works out for you. Most notably is against Control Radovid where you're going to use the Shackles on a Bloody Baron to mess up the villain Tretmare. Then there is the Yaven here. Yaven gives us a little bit more deck thinning as well as something to scorch that your opponent puts on the board. With that discussed, we're going to go into two games and I'll have a bonus game at the end. Okay, our first game is against the cockiest uh, full test player ever. My hand was not all that great, but I was able to deal. Uh, one of the weird things about full test is they have to play their leader ability early. I think that's so boring and dumb that they designed it that way. I'm going to play my Hawker Smuggler. I could have played that earlier, gotten some more points. But it's probably not going to really matter in the long run. I'm going to get an excellent Sheldon Skaggs here. Didn't really get any opportunities to use last rate there, but I'm actually really happy that I didn't use last rate. I'm gonna get the best Sheldon Skaggs ever. <laughs> Not really. It's it's a great Sheldon Skaggs. Uh, it's a lot of tempo, but I wasn't gonna do it any other time, so might as well do it now. My idea here is my opponent's probably running uh, Siege Support, so I'm going to take advantage of that 
So then I realized, oh, I don't have any, uh... <laughs> I don't have any units in my hand for the Dragoon to buff, so I'll go and buff, get the Archer out of my deck and get that buff. This shows me that he does, he has one of his guys in his deck, which is probably fine. I'm gonna decoy this. Thins my deck some more, allows me to remove some more points off the board. The longer this round goes out, the better it is for me. I know that if I use marching orders, I'm gonna get Bran at this point. Is good. I'm, the decoy isn't going to do anything, so what's the point? So it's going in my head. I already have a game plan in mind for the final round. Yeah. Now I could have gotten card advantage, but I didn't need need. Well, I got card advantage through Yavin, so it's fine. Uh, I got Saskia in my hand. My opponent's now emoting some more. It's annoying because <laughs> he has no idea what he's up against. He's played an awful lot of units though, but he's playing that 37 card deck. What's a who is it? Uh, I'm not a fan of that siege support, so I'm thinking, well, let's get rid of it. Boom. 14 um, strength silver was pretty good and it had a removal effect. He emotes again. Oh, I actually am really happy to have seen that card. Yeah, I kind of expected the uh, guys to come out here, but he didn't. They didn't get buffs. Well, I got the Milva I need. Gonna play that now. Removes three strength from his board and allows me to play a Thaler easily. I misplay here. Uh, I should have put it into the melee row. The deck I'm up against definitely plays. Witchers, and I should have taken in that into account. Unfortunately, I didn't. I'm gonna play my Dragoon to get points now, as opposed to later. Play my Saskia, not much point not to. Opponents, I don't know why my opponent's playing so much stuff into the melee row, but maybe it was, it's fine that he's doing that. I'm gonna hit the unarmored unit, Dollar, because that's pro for the best. Now I have my strategy set up. I'm going to move all his stuff into the melee row. And I'm going to do some lacerating. And I'm going to emote back at him. He's going to play his last Witcher. And I'm going to show him the true power of a meme lord. Don't emote until you won the game, guys. That's my philosophy. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go into probably the most interesting game I played all week. If I had uh, played this earlier, it would have been my game of the week. Just, this is what happens when Scoia'tael plays against Scoia'tael and they're running a lot of the same cards. I, I don't really get uh, getting the mulligan card right now. Because I know it's going to be weaker than his, but I don't get playing Operator in this kind of deck. Maybe it's just a card I can't play right now. I don't know. It does make his units uneven strength, which is okay. If he keeps card advantage, he's less vulnerable to Scorch. But I'm like, that's a rookie mistake. Uh, this actually went really badly for me because I had too many spells in my deck. I was hoping to draw something else. Could have played that much better, in my opinion. But I have two Dragoons on the board, so it's not as horrible as it could have been. But if I had gotten more card advantage there, it would have been so much better. <laughs> Should have played the Dothlana Archer or something. Okay. I just pass for a little bit of card advantage here. I have ways to regain my card advantage. But that screw up with the Elven Mercenary earlier is gonna it's gonna drive me nuts. Draw into Illyrian. 
since our rounds have been really short, I still have a bunch of cards I do not want to draw in my deck. But you'll notice how quickly we go through all of those cards. Oh, he's running Shiro too. This is my thing's exciting. I'm going to get the unbuffed Gothblon Archer out of my hand. Okay, well, i got to mirror that. Oop. Don't want Saskia, of course. Well, if you're going to decoy, I'm going to decoy. I have going to decoy the one he has so that he can't scorch for an even board. I'm going to pull in my good old Sheldon Skaggs for late game shenanigans. This is already getting really weird. <laughs> oh, all these Yavens, all these decoys. He's going to debuff his Yaven. I'm going to now push our Yavens back into our hands. That way, his weak Yaven will uh, not get hit by the Scorch, and my Yaven on his side of the board is now in Scorch territory. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. Okay, I'm going to play my Mulligan guy. I don't want to play the Smuggler because if it gets too big, it'll be in Scorch range, and I don't want anything in Scorch range. Uh, I kind of misplayed here. I should have played the other, the Blue Mountain Commando first. Oh no. <laughs> it ended up not mattering too much, but I would have hoped to have gotten uh, Zoltan Shive instead of Saskia. It's my last card. I'm gonna just play Saskia. Okay, I see um, his board. I'm gonna use the Scorch now because I still have the Scorch from my leader. He doesn't have anything for his uh, guy to pull. I'm going to play my archer now. Okay. I know exactly what my opponent is doing, so I'm going to use my mutagen to buff up my shiru, put him outside of... Because I had two other nine strength cards on the board, I didn't want him scorching all three of them. Now I can safely play uh, sh my smuggler. I want to play that earlier rather than later, but... Who knows what else he has in his hand? He plays the Scorch. Cause he something tells me the last three cards he has is Um Vanguards. I actually have to uh Scorch here because my Sheldon Skags will be too big. And it also allows me to get a Dragoon buff. The other th option would have been to have uh, used uh Mutagen on him to weaken his stuff. Uh, I decided to emote there. I, it might have been considered BM, but I said well played. That's what my intention was. Okay, this is the bonus match. I decided to play against an AI opponent. Uh, I was inspired by Regenti's movement deck to make a deck... Uh, that had the cow in it. Just a silly deck. It, uh, so not too different than what I was handling. So I just passed there. No point in uh, pushing that. My opponent played a lot of big cards. Couldn't really fight for card advantage. Get my old Sheldon Skaggs out of here. Got pretty lucky there, actually. Ouch, the Scorch. It actually protects me from an Igni now. Wow. I'm actually surprised my even my AI opponent did that. Could probably actually put the uh, water down earlier. Just thinning my deck of all the stuff I don't need. Get Saskia. I'm actually happy to draw it now as opposed to later. Just gonna hit the same unit. Okay. Gonna keep my Mithabarak because it's gonna go well with my... Uh... <laughs> cow that I buffed up. 
We got Shiru. I was thinking of using the weather to proc the cow, but then I learned that the cow, I mean, the weather is only one-sided. So I'm going to put down my cow. Uh, this looks like a good scorchable board, so I just scorch it. Was not expecting the third one to come out. Probably could have done that. Uh, misplays were made. <laughs> Gonna scorch again. Just deny my opponent anything. Well, if he's gonna use that, then the weather can be played. Oh, okay. I also learned here that I can only use the archer on my opponent's units. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and victory! Yay! That was against the AI, but it was still fun. So that's the movement deck. Say I'm gonna do my thing my way No matter what you people do I'm gonna do my thing much better than you No matter what you say or do Oh boy, you're out of luck It's gonna roll right off of me like water off